Thanks to excellent fishing minigames found in recent blockbuster releases like Yakuza 0 and Final Fantasy XV, people are talking about fishing games again. So it really works in our favor that this week's game is Umizuri ni Iko, which translates to Let's Go Fish in the Sea. Umizuri ni Iko was released on April 1st, 1999, and it came to the Wonderswan thanks to Coconuts Japan Entertainment, a company that would develop and publish numerous sport and pachinko related video games until December 1999. Unfortunately for them, Coconuts Japan is one of those completely forgettable game developers that never made anything bad enough to be offensive or good enough to be worthwhile. It's hard to claim that Umizuri Niko is anything more than a bare bones fishing simulator. You cast your line in a very similar fashion to how you swing in golf games by stopping a meter going back and forth on the right side of the screen. Once your line is in the water, you get to see a cross section of what's going on underwater with a handy indicator to the right side of the screen telling you how deep you are relative to the bottom. Fiddle around with your line enough to get the fish's attention and they might bite, in which case you have to reel in the fish and wrestle for control to avoid the fish escaping. Catch a fish and you'll be presented with a lovely pixel art rendition of the fish alongside its name and length. To make the game look more substantial than it really is, they presented it in a basic story structure, where your fisherman starts off fishing on a pier and then ramps up to more complicated locales such as a beach, a rocky shoreline, and then finally, the open sea. After catching the requisite number of fish in each area, you're awarded congratulatory items and move on to the next stage. You're also given a password to write down so you can resume from the same stage in the future. It's a shame that the game itself isn't that exciting because the presentation is pretty good. The backgrounds used for each fishing location are amazing showcases of what skilled artists can do within the constraints of an 8 shade grayscale palette. And as I said, the pixel art renderings of the different fish you can catch are also really nice. The music isn't half bad either. But ultimately, no amount of presentation can salvage a boring game, and this game is no exception. Coincidentally, on the same day that this game was released, Sega Bass Fishing was released in Japan on the Dreamcast. That would be far more successful at making fishing video games exciting, thanks to its fast-paced arcade gameplay and fancy fishing rod peripheral. If Sega Bass Fishing was testing your reflexes and skill, then Umizuri ni Iko is about testing your patience. But is that really what people are looking for when they're looking for a fishing game?